Okay, you guys. So something I'm really excited about, which some of you would have already seen this on Instagram. I'm just gonna, it's really hard for me to tell where this camera is pointing. Anyway, so something cool that I got is I got these new inserts for the weaving kits and they have a custom QR code on the back. And what's really cool, I specifically remember when QR codes first kind of became a thing that you had to like get an app in order to scan them. But now you can literally just open up the camera on your phone. I'm gonna try to show you here. Open up the camera on your phone, point it at the QR code, and this thing will pop up and it'll take you directly to the mini woven wall hanging series that the kit is meant to follow. So this one will be in all the kits now. And then for our new thank you cards, um, just some really simple thing. And I guess I already showed you this, but also a custom QR code. Scan that, open it in YouTube. Oops. And this one takes you directly to the main page of the YouTube channel because the thing with YouTube is that I, I'm pretty easy to search on YouTube now, but this just makes it way easier. You can go directly there, you can subscribe. Um, you're not trying to put in a URL or search for me there. This will take you right there. So anyway, that's really cool. And if any of you are interested in creating custom QR codes, there are tons of different sites that do this totally for free. I used Shopify and you don't even need to have a Shopify account in order to do it. Um, I just chose Shopify because it was like the first one when I was searching for custom QR codes that I knew was like a trustworthy site. So anyway, I chose Shopify. So I highly recommend um, you can add these kind of things. You can have it so this leads someone to your Instagram or straight to your Etsy shop or any number of things. Um, you just have to have a URL and it'll basically create your custom QR code. So anyway, pro tip. Okay, I had more to say about this. Um, oh, my table, it's dirty. Um, I use Vistaprint for anyone who's wondering for my marketing stuff. It's really, really affordable. But I will say um, with affordability comes not the most amazing quality, but because these are just like inserts for my orders, I decided to just keep going with them until I find something or a company better. But anyway, I used two different papers for these and I'll tell you why. So for this one, this is their soft touch paper. It's really silky smooth. But the reason why I wanted to use this is because I knew that the color photo would show up better on it, um, just because of the type of paper it is. Then for these ones, I think I went with, I think it's, I don't know, maybe just matte on the front and back. But why I went with these ones is that if this one I wanna write a little note on, I can. This paper, if you write on it, you have to write with Sharpie. And even then you need to write with Sharpie and let it dry or else it's gonna smudge. So that's why I went with that one for these because these are solely just an insert telling them where to get the tutorial. And these ones, I might wanna write, you know, a little note that says thank you and your name and that kind of thing. So I wanted to make sure that this one was a paper that I could do that without having to worry about the smudging and worrying about it drying. So anyway, just a little tip. On today's episode of My Cat is Super Weird. Stop it. She's eating my fake plant. Stop it. Hey. Just <laughs> get down. Oh, let's go check in with these other guys. My Floyd. Can you say hi? Oh my gosh, you guys are so cute. Oh. Nova's my little attention seeker. Hey. Okay. Yeah, you're real needy. Where's Gendry? Let's go find Gendry. Here's my Gendry. These guys are mad because I haven't fed them and I need to go feed them, so I need to go do that. Walk on the treadmill for a bit. Very happy to have a treadmill because it's definitely snowy outside. All right, you guys, I was working on some shop update stuff and I realized I should show you. So 
I've prepped a bunch of wool for the kits because I really want to have, um, it's my face. Um, I really want to have ready to go kits so that when people do order, I'm able to get those out faster. And you think by now I would have done something like that, but I hadn't really. Um, I'm only just now trying to have more and more stuff made so that it is more ready to go to make the shipping process a little bit faster so that I don't have to be um, cutting and sanding looms before then going and packing orders. I want to have more stock available. And this is just something that I think comes over time. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I've only put out this weaving kit in February or March or something like that. So it's been a learning process since then. So I'm trying to kind of gauge the interest. And then now that we're heading into the holidays, I'm realizing like I should have more ready to go. And we've sold over a hundred of these kits now. And so I just feel like, okay, I think it's safe enough to say that I can have a little bit more stock available for those. And then that way I can just put all the things in the box, package it up, package it up and have it go out sooner. So before the kits were just completely um, made to order. And so now I'm moving in more of that production mode, trying to have more available in stock. So it's not like, oh, I got four kit orders and now I have to spend an entire day basically cutting um, looms with the laser and sanding and getting all that stuff ready. And then the next day I can finally pack them up. So anyway, <laughs> it's just a process. It's a learning process. If you're just starting out, I just wanted to encourage you in that. Just don't worry about how it looks like you can do made to order and that's a great place to start out so that you're not assuming that something is going to sell like crazy and then it doesn't and then you're left with all this stuff finished and you can't use it anyway I have so much to do it's Thursday today the shop update is tomorrow on Friday November 6th and this video is brought to you by the Spruce and Linen shop where you can find weaving looms kits tools and supplies link in the description box below the other, the other thing I got was some stickers printed. So these are just small, I think they're, I don't know, like an inch and a quarter or so, um, just with my logo on them. And if you've ordered something from me, you know that I use like a black washi tape a lot to kind of seal up the tissue paper on your packages on the inside. And um, I decided I wanted to step up my game in that way too and get these labels printed. Um, I'll probably sometimes use the washi tape depending on what I'm packing up, but I just thought that would be a nice little touch. And I, de I definitely think these plain white and black look so good on our tissue paper. So, well, I mean, I really like a really simple vibe for all my branding because I'm often selling really colorful things, right? Like all the different colors of roving and um, even some of the warp strings. And we have these, this really beautiful tissue paper with weaving illustrations on it. And so I always kind of want that to stand out. And I've always been such a huge fan of like craft paper, which is the color of our boxes, just brown craft. And then our, my weaving tape or sorry, my packing tape is also white with black logos on it. And I just love that contrast. I think it's really simple and sleek and you can't really go wrong with something that simple. And, um, it's just like easier on my brain if I'm just like, okay, it's black and white. And then no matter what colorful things are going on inside the packages, my branding stuff still really works well with it. So anyway, that's my opinion. I also love colorful packaging though. When I get orders and they're really beautiful like that, I love it. It's just not, um, it's just not my brand. This is my brand. So anyway, as I always tell you guys, it's a great thing to get started really simple when it comes to your packaging. Um, don't worry about having custom tape and stickers and all that when you're first starting out. When I first started, all I did was I got craft paper, color tissue paper. I wrapped everything in that. I put little strings on the ends and I still do that. And then I just taped on one of my business cards to each of the orders, like on the inside. And that's where I started. And then I started customizing as I went. And that's a really great way. And that's one thing I can say I've really learned this year. And again, this is my first, I finally surpassed actually my first year 
full-time in my business. And that's one thing I've really learned is helpful is start simple because it's really easy to stop yourself from even starting because you're overcomplicating it. So start really simple. And then once that kind of feels good and you've kind of got a system, then you can build upon that. So start really basic with what you can get. You know, maybe you don't want to buy hundreds of sheets of tissue paper just yet. So maybe you go buy some pretty tissue paper um, from a craft store or from a maker who sells in small batches or whatever that is and start there and then slowly customize. Business cards are so inexpensive, so that might be a great way to start with your marketing materials is just to have little business card size inserts and then again, build on that. So then I moved up to having a postcard that said, thank you for your order. And here's some different links about um, where you can find me and all that kind of stuff. And then I built on that and I got the custom tissue paper and I've even changed my custom, custom tissue paper once this year and I customize it even further. And I've added these postcards and now I'm stickers and that kind of thing. So you don't have to start with everything. So anyway, I know that a lot of people will prevent themselves from getting started because you think you need to do all the things and I'm here to tell you, you definitely don't. Cause that is, I started out as simple as possible and built on that. So anyway, that's my best advice for when you're getting started. Selling your physical products is just to start small and simple and build. All right, you guys, that pretty much wraps it up for this week. If you haven't checked out the holiday shop update, I'll stick a link in the description box below so you can go check it out. And if you're watching this um, in November of 2020, make sure you get your orders in by December 4th and the Etsy shop will be closed from December 5th to probably December 25th, 5th, 26th ish. So after Christmas, I'll open back up basically. So anyway, thanks so much for your support, you guys. And if you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.